Hello again, Mr RG Stuff here, back in the workshop. Now I always said I was going to make another 3D printed soundbox, however I'm not sure it was going to be this one. I was inspired to make this one after restoring the Tono Fox. That one has a very simple design where the gaskets and diaphragm are inserted from the front. This also gives me the opportunity to address some of the issues which people have pointed out in the comments of previous videos. Thanks to David Kay for your suggestion that I need more weight, and on this one I have included some of those big washers I showed in a previous video. This design also provides the enclosed sides I know David was keen on me having. Also thanks to Paul Harrison for your suggestion to use pointed set screws for the needle bar pivot. Previously I'd used ones which had more of a rounded front on them. I'm also going to use a stiff wire needle bar as you suggested, which I will cover in more detail in a bit. Thanks also to everyone else for your comments and suggestions on this project so far. They have all been very much appreciated and I know some things like weight were mentioned by several of you. So what have we got? Well obviously at the minute it's just a bunch of 3D printed parts, but due to the magic of uh, video editing uh, I should be able to give you a glimpse of what it's going to look like uh, when it's all together and working. So I'm going to start with the uh, the gaskets here. So um, these uh, came out of something else. I think they're effectively brand new and unused. Um, but uh, they dictated the size of everything. So I've got a pair of these. And uh, I decided um, to do a, a Tono Fox style body, which is here. And the gaskets will go in like so. And uh, in fact, if anything, the body's slightly too small. So I'm going to go with this body. Um, but uh, I might need to reprint it um, because it's easier to reprint the body than it is to uh, get smaller gaskets. And uh, I haven't got the diaphragm yet. Um, you might see here I've got a couple of these uh, moulds or dies or stamps or whatever you want to call them. And uh, I'm going to use uh, some um, aluminium foil, um, which I've used before, to make um, a diaphragm. And it's slightly different from the diaphragm I used in the previous soundbox, but it's basically the same design. And uh, so the diaphragm will go in there, and then the next gasket will go on the top. And um, I'll have this thing here. This will actually be stuck on anyway, so I'll be... Um, basically just slipping the the gaskets underneath and the diaphragm should just go down um, and fit between them. Obviously I have to put the diaphragm in before I put the second gasket in. And um, on the back, and this bit here will come off, I've got this here. Again it's got the uh, the um, brim I think that is for, from the 3D printer and uh, I've got some of these washers here and they'll fit in like so that will go on the back like so and then I've got a little ring to go in there so that's the isolator and um, this will be again I need to take this I need to take this bit off basically like so and uh, and just um, position that in there and that, that'll all get glued into position like that. So that's essentially what I'm looking at. Um, now the clever bit, let's put this down, the clever bit as always is um, the uh, the pivot and uh, you can probably see over here I've had several goes of printing this part in fact, I've had several goats printing several parts. These are sort of like spares and whatever over here. These are bits I, I'm, I'm not using. But it, um, I've got some uh, pointed uh, grub screws which um, are screwed into this plastic part here. And um, I've got some little um, screws screwed into the central bit basically as, uh, as places for the points to go so that the central section just sort of moves very freely back and forth. Um, so uh, that should be okay. I still got to um, drill and tap that hole there for the needle screw and I still need to actually make a needle screw or find a needle screw but uh, we'll get to that in a bit. 
So the other clever thing is um, how I'm going to attach the uh, diaphragm to here. So basically um, there's a hole in the top there and I'm going to use a stiff piece of wire and uh, I have to check actually. I meant to do this before I turn the camera on. So this wire is actually just over a millimeter, 1.6, 1.16 millimeters. Um, it's uh, supposedly two millimeter garden wire, but uh, obviously that's got plastic coating on it, which uh, accounts for uh, the rest of the dimension. So um, I've been experimenting actually. What I've been doing. Um, is basically making a sort of spiral um, or a couple of loops of the metal at the end and uh, then bashing that flat after it's been heated up and uh, and then drilling and tapping it. Um, so I've got a little bit of video coming up and uh, in this video um, you can see me heating up the end of the metal And then you can see me bashing it flat. And then I actually drill it. Um, I haven't videoed that bit. And um, the next bit is actually me trying to tap it. And uh, I had a couple of goes at tapping it. Uh, I was successful both times, but uh, to be honest, uh, my technique needs to improve. Anyway, um, you may have seen the picture of the very little screw that I made, but essentially there is a little screw, it's 10BA in size, and it's screwed into um, the, the hole or the tapped hole that I made on the end of the piece of wire. And basically I'm going to cut this to size, but it'll go, it'll go like so into the hole at the top. And... Um, it'll attach through the diaphragm and then I'll wax it both ends. Um, the other thing which I did try, which would have worked just fine, is um, actually soldering a very small screw onto the end of uh, a piece of wire and then using, sorry, a very small nut onto the end of a piece of wire and then uh, using a very small screw. And in fact that screw is even smaller than um, the a screw that I made, but um, I quite like the idea of being able to make these parts rather than having to rely on uh, things that I can't easily buy. Um, this uh, little nut and screw is out of an old uh, optician set and uh, I'm not sure I could actually buy them if I wanted to. But anyway, I can make uh, I can make ones which I think will work well enough. Anyway, so that's all the parts. I'm going to put it together now and uh, see what it looks like. But first I need to make the diaphragm. Okay, to make a diaphragm I'm going to use some of this pie tray material here. Now this is just the bottom of an aluminium pie tray. I'm just going to cut it till it's approximately the right size. Now when I first um, designed these uh, the idea was that I would just sort of squeeze the material between them in a vise, but I found that it didn't work that well. And um, I found it's better actually just to place the material on top and sort of um, get an impression of it. You really want the impression of the sort of bits in the middle. Now it's a little bit tricky. Um, I'm using this LED here, which um, has a nice round, smooth surface. So I'm basically going to try to get 
do the groove or do the, the impressions. If I'm very careful, I should be able to rotate this around. One of the biggest problems is keeping it all aligned. It's actually very easy um, to uh, get it misaligned and then you basically start getting ovals as opposed to circles. It all goes horribly wrong. Bit like that really, that's gone wrong a bit. Right, well that's taken a while, but uh, that's basically what we're aiming for. Um, the idea of having both these dies here is I can then flip this over. As long as I can get it located on OK. I can work it from the other side. Now, I can't say I'm stunningly impressed with that, but I think it'll probably be okay. Certainly, I'm going to cut it out and give it a go. Okay, so I've cut the diaphragm out now. Um, it will just go in there, but uh, when I assemble this, basically, I won't just be able to put it in there and put the gasket on. Um, what I'm going to need to do is actually... drop it in from the front with this in place because this is actually going to be glued in place. So the uh, the first gasket's going to go in, that will squeeze in there. Now if I just try to put this in, it will fit, but it's actually going to be really quite difficult to get the other gasket in and, and keep this uh, diaphragm aligned in the right place. I mean. You can see what it's going to look like, but um, it's going to be difficult keeping that central um, and actually so that it's uh, under the gaskets properly. So um, what I'm going to have to do is um, mount this onto the, the needle bar. So I'm going to have to um, put the hole through there and mount this and then get it all lined up with um, with this here. This will stick onto here. Not showing it very well. That sticks onto there. So that I can basically just uh, raise and lower the, uh, the diaphragm into position. And this is what I had to do with the Tono Fox because there was no way of actually attaching the screw um, while the diaphragm was in because there was no hole in the back. The Tono Fox has a variety of holes but not one in the middle. So I'll have to attach that on like so and get it all lined up so it drops in as centrally as possible and then I'll be able to um, put the second gasket in and uh, that should be fine. Okay, well, I've had a little bit of a change of plan. Um, I was going to fit the uh, diaphragm sort of last, but um, to be honest, I'm, <laughs> I'm so dubious about uh, this diaphragm as to whether it's going to fit. Um, I've done some test fits. It doesn't sound like it's going to be much good. Um, there's a distinct clicking. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fit this bit here 
so the uh, the needle bar pivot and also this ring here and what I've had to do here um, I realized when I tried to fit the uh, the needle screw that uh, there wasn't enough meat um, so there wasn't enough plastic really to uh, tap a decent hole so um, I've had to build up the plastic I basically put the screw in and build up the plastic around it which forms the thread um, rather than actually tapping it and I've also had some trouble with the actual uh, hole for the needle itself it wasn't really deep enough and it was too wide so I've had to muck around with that that's all with the uh, Modify 3D tool. In fact, it's the Modify 3D tool and also the uh, uh, the Velman one. I've had to use both of them. <laughs> um, anyway, it's not great, but it it'll do. It's it's okay. So I think we'll go with that. Right. In order to fit the uh, needle bar to the diaphragm, I'm going to use this uh, rather fancy Japanese hole punch. Um, and I'm just going to sort of. Uh, work out roughly where it needs to go like so it's a very good punch if you uh, get hold of one I'm not sure what brand it is or anything um, it's definitely worth having Right, uh, well that should be good enough. Um, it's not the best made screw or the best made um, thread it's screwing into. But um, I think with a little bit of waxing it's not on quite as tight as I'd like it to be. But I think if I wax it it'll probably, probably be okay. It's going to be a case of... Uh, shortening this uh, piece of metal here so that just drops in there Okay, so it's been overnight, so all the plastic parts that I glued together are now set. Um, in the end, I decided to uh, put the diaphragm in and then cut the needle bar to length and then glue it. And I used just a little bit of super glue for that. 
and um, that's worked fine except for the fact that uh, the diaphragm doesn't come out um, like it should do so that leaves me with a bit of a problem with the gasket that needs to go on top so I'm either going to have to cut the gasket or I'm going to have to take out um, probably the needle bar pivot and then slide it on from that side um, I'll have to decide what to do with that okay just had a slight disaster there the uh, the pivot block came loose um, so I have um, just um, super glued it back on and uh, it seems okay the glue I was using clearly wasn't um, suitable it was uh, well I say it wasn't suitable it was the end of a tube or a tube that wasn't working very well so I probably didn't put enough glue on to be fair um, so what I've decided to do is to uh, remove these pivots here right so that comes out like so should be able to get uh, the gasket on from this side not going to worry about putting it in at the minute let's get the pivots back in what's going to be quite difficult um, to judge with this is just how loose those um, just how loose the pivot is and when I say loose you want it to be you want there to be um, a great deal of freedom in, um, in this motion here but you don't want any sort of shake side to side so that doesn't feel too bad actually I think we might go with that and then can we actually squeeze this gasket under right and there we go second gasket in and it's um certainly looks the part um i think probably next will be to wax the uh the pin or wax the uh the screw now you may wonder why am i doing all of this with a needle in the uh in the uh, needle bar and uh, the reason being is because it allows me to better judge um, whether I've got the angles right and then the angle isn't brilliant to be honest um, but um, I might be able to adjust that later on with a little bit of tweaking but um, without a needle in there it's actually very difficult to know whether you've got this at the right angle right for waxing I'm going to use a, a tiny little bit of beeswax beeswax in small quantities is actually very cheap and uh, although you could use candle wax, in fact I have another sandbox that clearly has been redone with candle wax. Um, I think beeswax is better. So I'm just going to put a little bit there. Um, I have to admit I'm still uh, not sure just how much I really need. And the other thing I'm going to use is this... Um, 3D printer um, or 3D print modifying tool. So this is actually the Velmon one. I've got a couple of these. I'm not sure whether I want to wax it like this or. I'm sure there's an art to this that I don't know but essentially the wax is to improve the um, the seal between the needle bar and the, um, the diaphragm itself As usual, nothing like as neat as I intended it to be, but there we go. What I have learned about waxing is that um, 
it stays molten longer than you think it does. So you do need to let it set before you uh, tilt it or examine it or do anything with it. Now for the back, I'm just going to put a little disc of wax in there over the screw. Now I'm showing what I'm doing, but that doesn't mean to say this is the best practice or anything. I just need to be very careful with this because this will melt, melt the plastic of the body as well. I need to keep the sandbox level so that the wax doesn't just roll everywhere. So hopefully you can see. Next will be to deal with the back. Uh, I've already glued the washers in. Um, so I need to deal with the actual throat or the neck or whatever you want to call it. I've got a tiny little screw there and that's one of those optician screws for um, the pin for the locating on the tone arm. I've got the rubber isolator ring and then once all that's fitted um, it's done. Okay so I've just been gluing on the the neck or the throat um, it's just glued onto this rubber o-ring which is glued onto the back. Um, I've used that uh, before, that seems to work okay. Um, and I put the pin through which is the locating pin for the uh, tone arm. And I've basically been copying the angle by looking at this, uh, this H and V number 4 here. So um, that should be okay. So the next thing to do is just to uh, glue the back on. And this is just uh, this is just a weight, really. There's there's nothing to this other than uh, just to go over the back like so, and just provide a bit of extra weight. In fact, quite a lot of extra weight actually. Most of the weight of the sound box is coming from this back piece. There we go. It's uh, not my finest work. Annoyingly, uh, I didn't get the back on quite as straight as I'd like it to. Uh, I think maybe for the next revision of this, I will make some sort of locating lugs or something so it can only go on um, directly behind the front bit um, and not off by a fraction of a millimetre, which is what it is at the minute. And that's what the back looks like there. So the tone arm actually goes into the back. So though it's quite thick, um, it's... Uh, it doesn't completely stick out from the tone arm by that amount. So anyway, um, one of the key questions is, is how much does it weigh? So that's 118 grams, which is, I believe, four and a quarter ounces. Um, if we just compare that to... Um, This is a brass back to number four. That's 152 grams. Now I think my target weight before was 130 grams based on the number four that I was weighing. I have a feeling that might be a pot metal one. So my target weight was more like 130 grams. Anyway, in Imperial, that's uh, five and a quarter ounces. So it's not as heavy as my target weight of 130 uh, from a previous video, and it's certainly not as heavy as this number four, but it is considerably heavier than um, my previous uh, 3D printed uh, sound box. Right, well, as I was curious, I went and found that other um, number four sound box. It's this one here. And that indeed is 132 grams. So that's something I didn't know. I mean, I knew the uh, the pot metal ones were lighter than the uh, than the brass backed ones, but I didn't know they were 20 grams lighter. So anyway, in um, imperial measurements, that's four and three quarter ounces. And um, if we just compare that to my original 3D printed sound box, or not the original one, but the uh, the last one I did. That's only two and a half ounces 
and in uh, metric that's 74 grams. So um, the new one is uh, is considerably heavier but not as heavy as either of the number fours. Okay so now I'm just going to do a quick test on the gramophone. Okay well I've spotted a few things I don't like about this sandbox already um, but uh, rather than discuss them let's just give it a go. So um, I put a soft tone needle in and I'm going to be recording this on my zoom microphone and uh, we're going to have a little burst of a record that I don't much care about. Right, well I think that will do for the minute. Um, I need to uh, listen to the Zoom recording, uh, which uh, you just heard, and uh, and see what I think. And uh, as always, I'd be very interested in any comments and suggestions you have. But this video is plenty long enough as it is, so I think I'll leave it there. So uh, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it, and uh, please subscribe if you haven't already, and see you in the next video. Bye for now.